I joked on the way in, it's it's nice to see more on Wednesday night than we've seen on some Sunday Sunday mornings there in December and in the summer of January. <clears throat> but uh, it's it's nice, amen. Uh, it's it's. Who's this here he is. Um, First John chapter number two. We, um, but I'm very thankful for uh, what the Lord's doing. We're finally back to doing some things and 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 getting things settled. Uh, we do have a membership class if you'd like to be a part of that. Um, uh, starting on the, I believe it's the twentieth. Um, it starts at nine thirty, and it'll be run right up till Sunday school class. Um, let us know so that we can prepare a biscuit for you. Amen. Amen. Or donut. Just depends, right? Just depends on how early we wake up. Um, between donuts and and biscuits um i didn't know that donuts were faster than biscuits till the last time we did this um they're definitely faster uh but we want to invite you to that if you've never been a part of listen we've got members who, who go here and uh this is something new that we've been doing uh over the last six months to help our new membership uh understand where we are where we stand and where we're going um, and I believe it's beneficial to them. And if you if you'd like to take part in that, I think it'd be good for you. I remember Miss Nancy; uh, she is already a member, and she decided that she wanted to do it as well. And then just kind of said, "I'm just going to recommit to this thing." And um, wouldn't you? Don't you believe it was beneficial to you? Now she gets to help. Amen. It's her thing. <clears throat> it's your thing. Do what you want to do. Um, <laughs> it's tough living inside this mind of mine. I put a lot in there growing up, and somehow it's like I'm a sponge. It gets and I get squeezed at all the inappropriate times. Uh, se- <laughs> uh, the second chapter of First John, we've been looking in there uh, and looking at a joyous life, as uh, John explains to us. And I'm not going to go over the whole chapter. Uh, today I don't believe that I have time and I'm not going to force it um, if you if you're okay with it I'm just going to take my time going through the this uh, the first book of John um, or the first epistle of John um, and spend time uh, dealing with subject matter uh, in this particular section we're going to look at the boundaries of a joy joyous life So let's stand for the reading of God's word as we look at verse number 12 together. I like these verses. um, And I like them more now that I kind of have studied them and understand them a little bit more. But I've always liked them because they're they're just easy to read. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven uh, for for his name's sake. I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that he is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the Father. I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you. And ye have overcome the wicked one. Now here it is. Put your steel-toed boots on. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Word. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doth the will of God abideth, say it with me now, forever. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for being so good to us. Lord, we ask you, God, that you take your Bible. For lay it open like a fish for us tonight that we may uh, may have a smorgasbord of learning. 
Lord, that we may grow in your grace and your gospel, that we may establish ourselves in your truth, Lord. Uh, God, I pray that you'd work in our hearts and, and use us for your glory. I pray that you'd empty me of self and sin, fill me with your spirit tonight, because it's the Super Bowl. And I pray, God, that forever, forever, God, you'd establish some things and leave no doubt in our heart. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> As we dig into this section, I want you to take a look at verses 12 through 13 or 14. And notice with me that um, John begins to identify some subgroups within the church. Some subgroups within the church. Now, in this room tonight, we have representatives from every subgroup that John displays here. And here's the problem. We get hung up on the terminology without understanding the truth. And we will turn this into a monotonous... Uh, what's the word? I, uh, monotonous? No. Misogynous truth. Could have got real awkward there for a second, couldn't it? The, the, word, the word was getting mixed up, and it was about to get weird. Amen? I have found one thing in pastoring. Acknowledge the mistakes and move on. Amen? Um, <laughs> but you see, there are three subgroups that he talks about, and in, in this room, we have every one of them. Because every one of you fit in this category. You say, I'm a woman. It doesn't matter. This is about the body of Christ, the, the church, and being happy within the church, within the body. And he starts by saying, little children. He brings us to the little children. And how many people in here would just be like, I don't want to be called a little kid. Amen. Every kid that I know of wants to be older than they are. Every one of them. How old are you? I'm 13 and a half. Amen. I'm seven and a half. Everything got three. Wait till they get to the quarters. Amen. Three quarters. I can't wait till Titus says, Daddy, I'm seven and five sixteenths. I'm eight and 15 sixteenths. All right. Yeah, Titus. That's, that's, he's the kid that will do that too. But it says in verse 12, I write unto you little children because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. It goes down to verse uh, 13 and at the end there. It says, I write unto you little children because ye have known the Father. Here's the basic concepts. Paul calls these babes in Christ, little children. They're babes. They're just learning, they're developing, they're fresh in the Word, and we have some in here today. Don't get discouraged because you don't know, because you're learning, you're growing. The Bible says to desire the sincere milk of the Word. Amen. But it also says you can't live on milk forever. Amen. And at some point you have to hit a transition. And there's an ultimate goal. An ultimate goal is to be one of those fathers. Now, everybody in here, uh, moms are like, I ain't no father. I'm a mama. I get it, but we ain't talking about that right now. Amen? We, we, we're talking about something different. You see, these fathers are those that are nourished in the word. They, are, uh, they have been in the faith for some time now, and they are stable. They walk intimately, do you hear that? Intimately with the Lord. We have some of those in here. I'm thankful for that. You see, uh, notice, uh, notice what he says to him. He, or to, to those fathers in verse 13 and 14, he basically says the same thing. I write unto you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning. You know him who hung the stars in space. You know him 
who made the sun to shine in day. You know him who know, who made the moon to shine at night. He, you know him who laid the foundations of the earth and and, and covered and overlaid it in grass and and, and 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 planted the trees. You know him who created man out of the dust of the earth. You know him from the beginning. Isn't it amazing and wonderful to be able to sit there and believe that G, that the Lord God spoke all of this into existence without any wavering tonight? You're established in the faith. That's nice. But then there are another group. I like this group. Sometimes I fall back into this group. It's the young men. The young men of faith. The young of faith. Amen. This is when you're supposed to get excited now. The young of faith. Those that ain't babied no more. And they ain't so old that they're settled. Amen. They are digging. Wait, let me say it again. They're not those that are babies licking the milk. They're not <laughs> those that have established themselves and sit there and say, this is it. I'm, it. I'm not doing anything anymore. They're, they're in the middle. And it says this, that these are those that are just, that, uh, here's how I put it, those that are working on it. That are working on it. Uh, you, you, what, what, let me explain it to you. Look at verse 13. It says, I write unto you young men because you have overcome the wicked one. Hmm. I, you've overcome the wicked one. That means that there are, they are going through the trials of life, but they're overcoming them. You see, with every test and trial that you will go through in your life, you will establish stronger faith and reliance on God. Look at verse 14. He says, I write unto you, young men, because you are strong. And here's the key element. And the word of God abideth in you. And he said, and you have overcome the wicked one. Reiterating. But notice that it, it talks about their strength. But the strength comes from the Word. And it's ever-present in their life. They're living their life by the Bible. Woo! Concepts here. And within this group, I'm thankful to say that Truth Baptist Church, I said it before, is a multi-generational church not only in age, but also in spiritual age, we have people that are getting saved. Thanks be to God, we still have people getting saved in our church. That, amen, amen. We wanted to have a church that was a soul, a soul winning station, didn't we? But listen, if all you're doing is winning people to Christ and leaving them at the altar, you're failing them. So it's really nice to see the growth of young people who, who catch on fire and say, you know what, I, I, seen it, I seen it in the Bible today, it said this. Now, preacher, can you tell me about this? And I love getting text messages that I go, man, I don't want to answer this. I love getting those. You know why? They make me work hard. They do. It's nice. It may take me a minute. I may have to look something up. I may have to say, Lord God, I don't know. I ain't got a clue. Let's pray about it. Let's ask the Lord whenever he comes back, all right? I'm not that guy who's going to give you some eloquent answer. I'm going to give you the straight truth and nothing but the truth. So help me, God. Amen? But then, you, you see, we also have those that have been established in the faith. And I'm thankful that we have those that are established in the faith but that haven't lost their edge. Let me explain. You got this? They aren't setting mopey thinking that the gospel message and the, the uh, uh, calling that God has for their life has passed them by. No Within the context of their life, they're living out the message in the way that God allows them. So, 
We have those that are in the, that are not just older in age, but we also have those that are older in spiritual age. Daniel Noel may be 900 years old in spiritual terms. Would you agree with me? I mean, with a rocking chair, a cup of coffee, my man is old in the faith. Long in the two. <laughs> but you see, at every, at every stage, there is joy to be had. Would you agree with me? At every stage, at, listen, there should be excitement at the new birth of a young Christian as they fall on their knees and pour out their sins to the Lord Jesus as He wipes them all away. You know, I love those testimonies that they just stand up. It's only three seconds. They're scared to death. Tears are falling out of their eyes for an hour before they say anything. And they say, I just want to say, I'm so thankful Jesus saved me. And they sit back down. I love those, the first testimonies, because they are so sincere, because they're just so thankful that somebody died for them. And then you get the more established Christians who get longer, and sometimes it turns into them. But we got something to say to you guys here in a minute, so don't get comfortable. You see, but in the transition, you're growing. And in the growth, you're having joy. But I want to tell you that there are some things in those areas that transition with you and will never change. And unless you set some boundaries, you will struggle in your transitions. Did you hear that? If you don't set some boundaries, you will struggle. You see, how many parents in the room will agree with me that it's hard to raise children without establishing some boundaries? Right. Amen. The, most of the parents who struggle are inconsistent in their boundaries. They've never established clear expectations and parameters for the child. So the child is sitting there going, well, I don't know what to do. I'll just do what I want to do. No, 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 you say that you can go this far, but if you take one more step, I'm going to light your world up. Amen. It's just like that in your Christian walk. Without parameters set in your life, without boundaries set up, you will struggle. When I was growing up, we, my dad would set boundaries. When we go to the beach, he'd set boundaries. My mom had a very bright, she, she's a heavier lady, <clears throat> and she wore a, a bright um, bathing suit. And you could see her very well from the water. So my dad would always say, when you're swimming, make sure that you can see your mom. Parameter set. Then he said, then mom, we always went up a little bit. Because for some reason, Myrtle Beach, you know, West Virginia's beach, always had like a drag to it. So we go up the beach, and that's where Mom would sit. Well, down the beach was where our, our umbrella was. And Dad still has this, to this day, a bright yellow umbrella. So from Mama to the umbrella was the established realm of our swimming. If we went beyond on either side was when fire got unleashed on the back side. Amen. Because, here's the thing. It, Mom and Dad knew that if they looked within the boundaries, that's where we were. If we weren't in the boundaries, they started freaking out. Because danger was on the outside of the boundary. When I was growing up, uh, we had another boundary that was set. Just like many creekers, Point Lick Ball Field was a staple of our community. And everybody came and hung out at the ball field. We had a rule in our house. When the ball field lights went off, we better be inside the house. 
I remember. I was see. I, I, I had a girl that was watching me play baseball, and she was she was there to see me play baseball, and I was being cool, and I was, I was like, "Well, yeah, the light, my grandpa's out there. He's the one who runs the light show, amen." Out there, literally, sometimes there's a light show, but I tell that story later. He flips the switches, and as they're going out, I'm like, "Man, I know I'm gonna get beat." She's pretty. <laughs> I was thinking, is she worth it? And I was like, well, uh, you know, uh, and she just kept talking. And I thought, I was just like, all right, but we're just going to go get beat anyways. Might as well get beat good. <laughs> and I, so I playing it cool. She was talking about the game. And I was like, yeah, I did all right. Being cool. You, do you know what it's like to be cool? You know what I mean? Girl just looking at me. What's up? She said, she said, what's that sound? I said, I, I don't know what you're talking about. She said, do you hear that? I said, I don't hear it. She said, it sounds like your name. I don't hear my name. Mm-mm. Don't hear it. Mm-mm. She said, uh, I, I think, I think. Is it, is it staff, that's your name. Standing under the street lights above the baseball field. My dad with his woolly mammoth shirt on. Amen. No shirt. Amen. All hair. Standing in there with a bullhorn. Corey, it's time to come home. Ended that relationship right there. But had I stayed in the parameters. Had I did what I was supposed to do, I probably wouldn't have been in the situation that I'm in. And many of us Christians get in the same boat. We are growing in our faith. We're getting established in our faith. We're getting grounded in the grace of the Lord Jesus. We're understanding the gospel. But man, we're living down here. And because we're living down here, we have to establish our found our boundaries down here that will say, I can't go there. I can't go there physically, I can't go there mentally, and I can't go there spiritually. It says, uh, 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 let's go, let's go to verse number, I don't know, let's look, 15 maybe-ish. Somewhere in there. Yeah, 15. All right. You say, preacher, what, what kind of boundaries do I need to have a joyous life? Here it is. The first one we need to do is, uh, is to, to consider what, what our love looks like. <laughs> yeah. Look what it says in verse 15. It says, love not the world, neither, oh, man is defining it, the things of the world. I was okay. Until he hit a comma on me. Because I'm going to be honest. If we were just going to talk about loving the world, I'd be okay with Saturn. Amen? I I would be okay with Jupiter and Mars. Any of those planets out there, I'd be fine with it. And just say, you know what, I love this one. I like this one. I like this one. Amen? But it, there's a comma there, and it explains. You see, because we can get caught up on the world, amen? We can say, oh, it's, a, it's the sphere of, of the universe. It's yada, yada, yada. No, 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 no. Let's not get all over philo- philosophical here. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So we're talking about the things of the world, specific things of the world. John says, let's, let's set this strong boundary and learn that no matter where you are, what subgroup that you fall under, you have set this parameter that you do not love the things of the world. That means that you can live without them. Mm-hmm. Uh, John, you see, but, but there are, in the Bible, there are so many people who love the world. You can find it from Genesis to Revelation. People are attached to the world because we are attached to our senses. Mm-hmm. I like things that I can see, I can taste, I can smell, I can feel. 
These are the things, the tangible things. And listen, it's easier for us to live for a tangible truth than an untangible truth. Because we can see it, it becomes more real to us. We can feel it, it becomes more real to us. Paul said of Demas in, in 2 Timothy, he tells Timothy, he's like, hey man, Demas has forsaken me. He said, I'm going to tell you why. Because he loves the world that he lives in, this present world. And because of that, he's, he's left me. And he names where he went. He said he's gone this way to live his own world and his own life. Yeah. The, Jesus said, for where your treasures are, there will your heart be also. So what you, what, what, what you like is what you'll deal with. In Joshua chapter number 24, we find that 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 that. that Joshua uh, is talking to, to the Israelites there and he's telling them, hey, you know, you know, you got, uh, I, I, I realize we've come so far. We've won so many battles. He said, but I, here we are. We, we've, we've fought for everything that we got, but, uh, but God has delivered us and God has given us victory after victory after victory. He said, and, and today I want you to choose. You can either choose the gods of the Egyptians, the gods of the Assyrians, or you can serve the God of all the universe. He says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He understood this central, this central truth. You can live for the gods of bondage, or you can live for the God who will free you. You can't have both. And when you try to have both, you will be absent of joy. So let me ask you this hard cutting question. Do you need to live a little bit less for the world and a little bit more for the Lord? I say yes, me too. Verse 26 tells us, uh, we, we, he, John said, he points out in verse 15 the love of the world, but he also, in verse 16, he points out the lust of the world. He said, for, the all, for all that is in the world, everything, he defines it now. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, it is not of the Father, but is of the world. You say, what happens? He says, I want to teach you a little something about Satan. He says, I want to show you his methods. And his methods never change. They all fall within these three categories. All of them. Everything. Huh. And what they do is they establish unhappiness and unrest with a grab to them. To hold you captive. Me and Mike was talking the other day. I think it was either last Wednesday or Thursday about baloney. I like some baloney. Amen. I like Oscar Myers with the yellow back on it. Amen. With, with cheese. I don't need no bread. I just take the cheese, put the baloney on, roll it up, and put it in. One bite. I love baloney. Sydney learned very early in our marriage that if she bought bologna, because I liked bologna, bologna didn't last. And I'm going to tell you why. Because when I see it, bologna is on my mind. Y'all think I'm not, no, I'm dead serious now. It's, a, it's, a, it's like a disease. I will sit in the chair. I'm hungry. Just ate at Olive Garden. I'm hungry. I really like some bologna. <laughs> and I walk to the refrigerator. And I'll grab a piece of bologna. Whoop, pow, throw it in. I'll just sit down. I said, man, that bologna is good. I'm hungry. I want some bologna. Next thing I know, it's been an hour. I'm 15 slices deep in bologna. The package is empty. 
She, am I lying? I am not lying. I, we cannot have baloney in our house. It just doesn't, no, 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 no. We can't talk about Bruno, no, no, no. We can't. <laughs> Sorry. If Ava was here, it really hit, and y'all, she would laugh. But you see, it gets on my mind. I can't stop thinking about it until I have to have it. That's exactly how Satan works. He gets it on your mind. You want to know why addiction lasts so long? It, addiction lasts longer not because of the substance, but because of the thought process that gets you to the substance. Because when the substance run out, the mind will obsess about the substance until it gets it back in its system. Mm -hmm. hmm. And he points out, Paul or John points out three, three truths here. He points to us the, the, that there is some lust uh, of the flesh that gets taken. He says, for, the, the, for all is in the world, the lust of the flesh... He said, it's not of the Father, but it is of the world. Jesus, uh, just consider this truth. This is a, consider this, this is our shameful appetite. The lust of the flesh. Many of us today will go right to adultery. It, I, don't, I don't ever lust after nothing. I don't ever lust after anything. But let a car drive by, and then they look at their jalopy, and their lips start smacking. Man, I'd really like to have that. Lust is a little bit different than the concept that we've created. Yes, it will go there, but it'll also be sinful. When Jesus is in the uh, uh, in the wilderness, Satan does not attack him with a pretty girl, does he? No, Jesus ain't eight. He's starving. He's hungry. And he, Satan says to him, he says, Hey, listen, if you turn these rocks into a loaf of bread, what? So the Lord was tempted with food. He knew there was a need there. And the need had to be facilitated. There was a desire to be facilitated. That's what lust is. It's more than just a sexual desire. The lust of the flesh. Then he, said, he, then he points out to us, he says, the, the showy appearance. It says, the lust of the eyes is not of the Father. Lust of the eyes, the showy appearance. In Proverbs chapter 7, I want you to go home and read it. I ain't got time for it. I'll just give it to you real quick and simple. There's a little lady... There, then Solomon's hanging out, looking over his, out, off his stoop out, of, out the window, and he sees a little lady there, and he's intrigued by her. He got problems anyway, but that's a different story. Do be, do weird, all right? But he's watching this little lady of the night. She's got herself all painted up. She got her. She she's got. She probably went to the Dollar General and got everything in the cosmetic line, just put it all on her face at once. And then she put, sorry, I'm just, she put on her nice clothes and she went out. She sees the man and the man's got his, he, he got his money pouch with him. And she said, to listen, uh, uh, what you about to do, boy? She said, won't you come over here and talk to me for a minute? And she, they start to talk back and forth and she, he start, he, you know. Hey, girl, what you doing? So she said, do you, she said, what, 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 where are you going? He said, well, I got some business to do. She said, I got some business too. She said, uh, um, at my house, she said, I, I've already taken care of some things. She said, and it's all laid out. Read this now, I ain't lying. Read it. He said, she said, I got it all laid out. I got it decked out. I got that Egyptian cotton. You know what I mean? Four, I got a thousand count, thread count, waiting on you, baby. Hey, hey listen, not some of you, I got to read this. 
This is better than Desperate Housewives. <laughs> Huge. And they, and. And here's what happens. Solomon concluded it with this in verse 22. He said, you're there. It says, he goeth after her straightway. Now look at this. This is the funny part. As an ox goeth to the slaughter, or a fool to correction of the stock. He said this joker got so enamored with the way that she looked, she could have told him anything, led him to the led him to get beat up and robbed. She could have led him to, to the murder. She could have led him anywhere he wanted to because he saw it, he liked it, and he went after it. You have to set parameters. Oh, but there's one more, one more here. He said, for all that is in the world, he he hits you with the last one. Because I know that there ain't no Christian up in here that got a problem with this one. And the pride of life. Man, that's an and that ain't nobody wants to subscribe to today, would you? You see, this is the ultimate original sin. Y'all said, preacher, I don't believe you. Hey, have you ever heard about a man named Lucifer? Kind of pride is what led him to his fall. And his pride brought others with him. And may I say this tonight, and I'll say it very clearly, your pride will always lead not only to your destruction, but the destruction of those that are around you. Just because you think you know better than someone else, just because you think you're smarter than them, just because you think that you know more than they do, just because you think you're more anointed than they are, just because you think that you should be on stage, just because you think that you're this and you think that you're that. And, ooh, mm. There's some people God put in your realm that are getting fed that line. And your responsibility to them is to humble yourself. Pray, seek his face. Mm -hmm. Lucifer, the fallen angel. Let me give you this last one. You see, are we lusting after something tonight? See, he went to the love of the world, the lust of the world. Now here it is. Here's the last one. The loss of the world. Miss Jill, are you taking notes? The lo loss of the world. Verse 17. And the world passeth away. And the lust thereof. But he that doth the will of, the, of, of God abideth forever. He said, I want to talk to you about some things that are passing away and some things that are permanent. The lusts that are down here are the lusts that will pass away. But the things that are up there are the truths that will stand for an eternity. Man, what an amazing truth. That he brings forth. You see but the problem is. When we discuss this matter. We get frustrated. Because everybody. No matter what subgroup they fall in tonight. Faces loss. And, and, and let, me, let, me, let me back that up for a second. Because some of you are like. Yeah I've lost people in my life. No, 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 no. Loss. This is different kind of loss. Not the loss of a loved one, not a loss of a friendship, but a loss where you have consciously had to choose between the things of God and the things that you really want. That's what loss I'm talking about. When you come to this conclusion that I need to stop this, so that I can serve him better. That's the loss. But I've noticed something. And, and, and this is, comes from my personal life. I've noticed. That I can nearly justify anything. God can tell me. That I need to remove this. But I can tell God. Eh, it's okay if I do it in moderation. 
Listen, look where moderation has gotten me. Amen? Well, that's a different story. That's a different sermon, isn't it? But we, we justify everything, and we learn it really early. Titus <clears throat> used to have a YouTube problem. We fixed it. He don't use YouTube no more. If anybody, if anybody lets him use their phone, don't give him YouTube. We don't let him do YouTube. And here's the reason why. There's a little guy on there worth $50 billion. His name's Ryan. I got something to say about Ryan and his little daddy and their little videos where they unwrap the toys. And it's funny for a little bit, but after 35 videos in 15 minutes, you know what Titus thinks? I ain't got nothing new lately. My mommy and daddy must not love me because I ain't got nothing new. Ryan gets a new toy every episode. So he's now comparing his life to him, so we took it away. Said, nah, bro, we can stick to Bluey. You know what I mean? We can stick to the bubble guppies, the Bluey, I, whatever you want. But we ain't watching no Ryan toy reviews. I ain't doing it. Mm -mm. I ain't buying his toys because maybe I'm a little bit bitter. <laughs> they don't have no talent, and they can make more money than me. Amen. That's weird. It bothers me. Sorry, that's personal opinion. What was I talking about? Ryan's toy review. We took you to be too. Justifying it. That's it. So now, that's my girl. Titus. Titus, a couple weeks ago, said, Dad, Amazon's not working on your phone. Sorry, it's an update, bro. Just wait. I don't want to wait. Can I use YouTube? Can I get on YouTube? And I said, mm -mm. He said, but I'm older now. I said, mm -mm. He said, Dad, can I just get on YouTube? I said, last time you talked me into this, then you cried for three weeks over a little dinosaur that you couldn't find in the store. No. He said, what are you getting at? I'm getting at this. Every one of us is sucked up on YouTube, looking at a world that is fake, that is set up, where toys are just delivered to us left and right, left and right. And we, we sit there with our phones in our faces. We sit there with, with these phones and, we, and we, we inundate ourselves with the information. And we sit there and we look at it and we see what everybody else has. And we look at our lives and we just say, I, I need this and I need this and I need this. And God said, you don't need that. I supplied this for you. I supplied this for you. You don't need this. And you say, yeah, God, but I'm older now. <laughs> we had Mike's challenge a couple years ago. Now Mike needs his own challenge. <laughs> Where we said, we're going to go off without Facebook for a whole week. Now we was a good theory. I wanted everybody to know it wasn't me. It was Mike. <laughs> but it don't matter. Because nobody sent Mike their justification message. <laughs> they sent me. As if I am the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is wanting to listen to this. And they would tell me why they couldn't get off Facebook. And I, you know, listen, they had, some of them had some doozies. I mean, just, I ain't going to go through it. But listen, why? You lived 40 years without Facebook. Why can't you live a week without it? It's because it's giving you what you want in an instant. And it's supplying you with endless content and context. 
But let me tell you this. You ain't happy with the results that you're viewing. Because you're comparing yourself to a picture that was taken 37 times to get the kid to stop crying. But we need to establish some boundaries. We need to sound some, some, some boundaries. And I don't know about you, but I want to set up some boundaries tonight so that my joy may be full. And I can be happy. Our, 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 this month, our theme has been with the recovery or with the, the true addiction and uh, with boundaries and I totally went away from that last week because I just followed God but boundaries was our subject matter when we had our open discussion at the beginning of the month and we went around and be, talked about boundaries and it was so good and then we got to little drummer boy uh, uh, we didn't know listen this is the first time I've heard the man even speak he's the guy who ri- drives the bus for the uh, uh, for the mission Sweet man, nice man. Always sits there very stoically. And, but he's completely in. I never thought he was, but he's completely in on it. And uh, we moved him up front because the, the, the girls wasn't occupying all the space. So the boys, apparently, the cooties is real. Because the men were, were sitting in the back and the girls sat up front. And, and uh, but so that, that night, all the men come forward and he sat up real close. And it's the first time he ever spoke. And we're talking about setting boundaries and all of this. And he, he, with all this wisdom, begins to tell his story about tripping acid in the 70s and playing drums on the road and all of this. And I mean, it was like, and I'm like, what band did he play in? You know what I mean? <laughs> he says, uh, he said, but we're talking about boundaries tonight and setting them. He said, I find, he said, I want to t- tell you something. The greatest boundaries that have been set in my life are the ones that I haven't set. He said, these are the ones that God set. And I started thinking about that, man, how mature that is. Now, this isn't a, somebody who was just going through, just learning about salvation. He's not gung-ho 100%, just, just doing anything, not reckless and, and just learning. No, he's somebody who's learning. And said, hey, I want to tell you, set some boundaries. And I come here on the middle of a week with a Wednesday night, I, and I said my mission this year is to have a church that is strong. That if something else happens, we stand stronger together. And it said, so what are we going to do, God? He said, go to John. Because our church needs to hear from him. So I come here tonight to ask you to do something with me. Let's ask God tonight to set some boundaries. With every head bowed and every eye closed, nobody looking around. Maybe you're here tonight and you've never established your heart for the Lord. You're sitting there and you're thinking, man, I I don't even know if I've ever been saved. But you know what? Uh, I, I really need to know. If you're here today and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I'd like to say to you, Jesus loves you. He cares for you and he died for you. If you're here tonight and you've never accepted him today, today. Maybe you'll slip up your hand and say, Preacher, will you pray for me? I'd like to know that I've been saved. Here's my hand. I'd like to know. Amen. Amen. Maybe you're here tonight and you say this, Preacher, I, 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 I know that I'm saved. If Jesus comes or I should die, I'm ready to meet him. Here's my hand. Here's my hand. Yes. Yes. Amen. Maybe you're here tonight and you say this, Preacher, will you pray for me that I could, that I could ask God to set my boundaries? Here's my hand. How about we do this tonight? 
So many people throughout the auditorium has raised their hand. Some people's already moving. How about you step out of your seat, come down tonight and talk to God and say, set your boundaries in my life that I may serve you better, happier, healthier, living in grace, living out your gospel, living to your glory. These have come. How about you? Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for being so good to us, Lord. You're wonderful. Lord, I pray that we would always take advantage of the growth moments in our lives. And Lord, we would all, with the desire, ask you tonight to set our boundaries. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Two things before I... Turn it over to Brother Chris, and he gives us <clears throat> the word, amen. Uh, for the next six months, we, we have, a, uh, we have an, a serving opportunity. Well, you know, it's just it's, we want to schedule for six months. It's a, it's a, it's a ministry forever. Um, but our, our true, one of the things that our addiction ministry does that a lot of them don't do is we have child care. And we would like to continue to offer that, and we have some openings. I believe, are we covered for tomorrow? We are not covered for, we are covered for tomorrow. But if you don't mind, get with uh, uh, <laughs> Miss Caroline and Mr. Mike and uh, let them know that you are available and what we, you're available to uh, be put on the list to work. Um, and pray for Miss Jordan. Tomorrow she's going to give her testimony. Huge. Huge. Amen. We're picking on her, but she knows she's going to be nervous. She's probably going to think about it all day tomorrow. Don't do that. Um, but just give them your heart. That's it. Just give them your heart. That's it. And tell them how Jesus loves them. Um, but I, I, I want you to come out tomorrow and, and sit in the back and support her. If, if anything, just come be a friendly face to her. Um, but don't come make her nervous. <laughs> Huge. I'm just picking on. Um, the second thing is, can yeah. I get a couple? Of t uh, we forgot that. about this. I, I know. Oh, and um, it's, it's my bad. Um, can I get a couple dudes? And, and we're going to take up. And as we're taking it up, Brother Chris is going to tell us. Uh, 
Scott, Scott. I actually don't I have a joke for tonight. Uh, I've yeah. really enjoyed this message and how that God has moved uh, upon the waters. And we pray that uh, he would continue to use Pastor Corey as we move through this year. Father, bless this offering for the use of the better building of your kingdom here in this life. Be with our dear brother as he is uh, ministering to the world as, as he knows it. For it's in Christ's name we thank you, we pray, and all God's children said, Amen. You all have a wonderful evening, and we'll see you soon. Good night.